Hello everyone, welcome back to my another tutorial where I'll show you how to make a prediction of sentences where is a handwritten sentences. So last time I showed you a tutorial and we went step by step how we can train a handwritten words recognition. But we saw that it's really sometimes hard to recognize the commas, dots or other signs when they are in a handwritten form. So we can overcome this problem while trying to recognize the line or sentence of or several words in the same image to improve our model. Of course, there might be also issues, it might be not perfect, but let's continue with my previous tutorial. And right now I'll work on the same handwritten database and we'll see how easy we can train another handwritten model with using, using TensorFlow, Convolutional Neural Networks, LSTM, and CTC loss. And about CTC loss, I, I will not explain in here. I already explained this in my first and second tutorials a little. So why going into repeating myself about the same stuff? You simply need to pick it, use it, and who cares how it works actually? We care about results as quickly as possible. So that, that's the idea. And the same uh, as before, I, I'll use my MLTU library that you can find on the same PyPy page and you can use pip install MLTU or you can go to the GitHub link that is in video description, get all the files and use them however you want. And of course, there is all the tutorials that I'm showing you and uh, all the text version tutorials are in description. You can follow it. It should be really easy to follow them. So here it is. And you might ask, what where it's used? Well, actually, this handwritten stuff. Well, uh, nowadays, they're, they're used everywhere. For example, when you have a bill in a restaurant, you can scan your check and digitize it. So it will be automatically, for example, added to the database, what you bought, how, many, how much you spent, or etc. Or you can digitize a lot of handwritten papers and into the computer world you can use however you want well and there is a lot of benchmarks on similar data sets and this is not the only one a handwritten database i am there is a lot of database i simply chose to use this one because for me it was pretty large it was easy to get it but also there is iam benham uh rhymes washington and say to goal uh, it says that are pretty popular and I, I will not go in detail step by step here because I don't remember all this stuff. But if you're interested, you can go to tech, my text search draw and check this out. And you might ask, what's the challenge in reading handwritten text with computer vision? It should be pretty easy, easier than captures or something like that. Well, that's not right. Take a look at this picture and try to read it. You might see that it takes you several seconds and imagine if you would like to type it with a keyboard in a computer, what's written here in the same form, it would take another 10 to 20 seconds because first you need to understand it and then type it. And that takes a little time and neural networks and machine can do this in seconds well not even seconds in milliseconds and we simply need to train it to do so because you can see that even us people can do mistakes because it's not very clear what's written here but we can make a machine to learn to fix these mistakes with some kind of English grammatical dictionary or something like that. That's not that hard. So we can think about that. And also it's challenging with handwritten text because every people had have, have different styles in writing. It's impossible to say that one person is writes actually identically as another. No, no, it's different. And neural networks can identify this. Also, you can, all the 
text has different noise as, as text is not always vertical it overlaps has different gaps in between words or between even strings there's a lot of noise and a lot of challenges with that neural networks should work with when we are working with this kind of recognition but you'll see we'll achieve pretty nice model just keep on following and be, i'll begin with a data set and right now let's go back to my code i have here sentences and what i need to do i i can open any of these folders and there's a lot of these sentences and i can open one of them for example and it's pretty hard to read as, as we can understand team to negotiate terms for joining the common market for example and he has uh plans to visit president d well you, you might see that it a, takes time to understand what it's written and for example when teachers in in our schools are fixing our papers reading them they they also need a lot of time to understand what you wrote and etc because they need to understand your style of writing and etc and then well, it would be way easier if we could go give all the paper, give it to computer, uh, read it for us, find all mistakes that, for example, student made, mark them down, and grade this, for example, essay, paper, style, hey, was it plagued or not? Well, there's a lot of opportunities where it could be used, as you can see. It's simply you need to work on that. Okay, but let's move on. Uh, you sort the database and next I can show you the annotations As you can see there is a sentence as txt and actually it's a little different from words but we'll handle this and as you can see it also has ok or error uh, as before and the id of the folder is similarly uh, shown but the text is separated with this kind of tower i don't know what the sign is how it's called but well it's simply tower uh, and this way we'll find out what is the sentence here and we'll create the data set but right now differently from previous part I can't use uh, my code to download this data set because I wasn't able to find a link uh, where I could download this IAM data set without signing up. It requires to create an account. This is, uh, well, not that convenient, but when we re register, sign up and log in, well, we can access the database, download it, we can extract it here, extract it to IAM sentences, and there is ESCI and, and sentences, it's annotations, and give the correct paths to this data set, actually. And you can see there is also, I imported a lot of stuff here, the same as before, it's my provider, annotations, transformers, my model, and etc. And then let's move on to this kind of data set creation and you might see that here i'm skipping the first lines where's the instructions and documentation how to parse this data set i skip the errors then i simply construct the full path path to the image and then i'll uh, creating the label while i'm replacing these kind of towers with a simple space and join this into the label and then uh, I'm creating relative path and saving it into a data set list as a list because there is a related path and label and I simply save it. And then I create a vocabulary of different characters in my data set and maximum length of the sentence that's necessary, of course. Then what we do is uh, we create a data provider and then image reader well that's actually the same as before because we'll use OpenCV to read images and then i need an image resize and now here comes the difference because last time i wasn't 
looking at this keep aspect ratio and that's actually what it makes it doesn't stretch as the image as before it will simply uh will add the padding at the left or right if, if the sentence is short or to the bot top and bottom add the padding if the sentence is long actually i can show it to you if you're interested let's i simply need to add one function to image show cv2 transformer and this will allow us to check what we have here and now i need to iterate this data provider for in data provider i use pass like that and now i can run this kind of script training okay let's let's look how our data looks like Okay, let's wait the data set to load in and then we'll be able to, well, actually it will show us what labels we have, as you can see here. Okay, so that, that's the first sentence in our training data set. I moved to shock Mr. Gitzgill from. I nominating anyone and you can see that the bottom and top is padded and here is left and right sides are padded with black border and actually this is what my resize object is doing not to transform the sentence image into you know stretched thing as i did before in my words recognition right now i'm doing it differently but when we are doing so we need to note that later in our inference code where we will be testing it it should be uh resize it in the same matter to feed it in the same way to the model as you can see okay so it doesn't matter you, you understood what is the data set so i'll close this right now i don't need this anymore because we don't want to iterate this while training so as you can see here i i was in the indexing the sentence padding the sentence with paid padding to can that i created here and etc and then I was uh, splitting the data set into training and validation. That's pretty clear. I using random brightness, uh, random arrow delay, and ra random sharp and augmenters. And I removed random rotate because you saw that these sentences are pretty long. So it's usually hard to rotate these kind of sentences because, you know, it, we rotated five degrees and the height of the image increase a lot we don't want this so i simply decided to skip this step for now and then i create a model we can go to the model and um, i increased a little the size of it because that's the sentences not word it will it should be a little harder to learn and i added an additional b term layer to well to have more parameters to learn that's all and then i go to my compile function and i use same adam optimizer ctc loss function and as you can see right now i'm using separate character error rate and word error rate metrics and what they changed from previous part they were in a same kind of object implemented but word error rate wasn't working properly actually there was uh, some challenging challenges in tensorflow to implement to make it work properly because i wasn't able to find for example uh, word error rate metric implementation in pure tensorflow to run this in metrics so uh, i spent several hours finding out how to do that and that that was a good lesson for me if you're interested how i did this you can get in dig in how i pre-process the words in tensorflow style you know that we can't use for loops so that's different 
and to, to process it we need to feed the whole vocabulary because in tensorflow level it will use my vocabulary to transform uh, indexes into actual tensorflow string and then it will calculate the distance and convert it into metric well, yeah, I, I did a huge job here, so no one else in the future should do this. They will be able to copy my function, and I believe you'll find it really useful, even not in visual recognition, but also in text recognition stuff that we'll do in the future. And the next, what I do, I define all the same augmenters as before, and I think I don't need to mention them again. They are my favorite, maybe I'll add later more, more useful of them, but we'll see. And then what we do, we simply call the fit function and our training starts. I will not run the training now because in previous tutorial, when I started training, my webcam started to lag a lot. So to avoid this issue again, I'll, I'll, I won't start the training, I'll show you the metrics, the TensorBall, how it, how it was training. So here it is. As you can see, I trained this model today uh, in the morning to make sure I have everything up to date and working. And now this is the chart error rate. As you can see, it started to learn something after 20 epochs. Uh, it started quickly decrease and, and somewhere here, but the validation uh, started to decrease lower than a trading. This means that uh, we would need more training data or we would need better augmentation techniques or improve our model. It's up to us what option we want, but knowing that there's a lot of open source data sets there, we can combine several data sets into one. And if I open my code, for example, uh, here where I am creating this data set, we simply need to merge two different data sets into one, feed it again to the data provider, split it, and you're good to go. So the chart error rate, as you can see, it, it's pretty nice. It achieved a four to five percent chart error rate, but we know that uh, word error rate will be higher than chart error rate because you know words have six characters and if one of them is wrong, the word is wrong. So, but compared right now, there's only one, well, few sparks and one big spark. And yeah, we saw that when we trained our words, it was a lot of spikes. So it's a little better, but I'm not sure. Maybe decreased learning or that's a data fault or modal fault. I don't know, there might be many reasons. And you can see there is a word error rate. And that's interesting. Here it started decreasing and immediately started going down. And yeah, that's not that great as before, as my chart error rate. As you can see, there is uh, around 17% uh, of wrong words. But compared, well, I don't think that sh there should be a huge problem if we would like to achieve it better like uh, below 10%, we would need to, well, as I said, add more data, more augmentators, uh, better model. It's up to us what what method we would like to choose. And it, it took one hour, 20 minutes to train. So you can see it's pretty fast in training if you are playing around and that's great. And now I believe I'm not showing you how to train, but you would be really interested to see how it works with a, a saved model. And I'm, as I said before, I'm not using the Keras model. For me, uh, I'm using the ONNX models, so you can use also them. And that's pretty amazing how how portable they are. We don't need to tensor install TensorFlow. But I have said already said this in previous tutorials. So one different thing is that we need to use this image resizer. That's the same object I'm using in the trainer, but here I have a, a static object that is accessible. 
and we can use uh, this simple resizing with a uh, maintaining aspect ratio that means we are padding left and right sides or top to or top and bottom that's cool and we replace this with a simple resizer and other stuff is actually the same and now I believe I can run this and I'll show you several labels as you can see it will bring me the label and the prediction chart error and where and of course will show the image so let's run this here it is as you can see uh the, the slightest effect and here is the the predicted label and here is the chart error this means that this was correct prediction let's move on to another of fruits well there is a one mistake as you can see and yeah there is two i instead of u and that's yeah, that's a mistake let's go to sentence this is also 0.6 character arrays and it's pretty long sentence uh so yeah where there is missing e it difficult well there's several mistakes as you can see but but overall it, it predicts pretty accurately and it's pretty nice to look at this because for us it will it, it's it takes way longer to understand what's written here and and if we would be interested to type it with our hands it would be really hard and this additional spacing as you see it's not that necessary why i don't know and so on. so Belize writing without over emphasizing border there's a lot of errors in word but overall it's pretty nice pretty nice as you can see it's not that hard to start training this kind of handwritten recognition OCR project if you are interested in them you need to know the basics what you need to use etc use the structure in your files and etc you can borrow some ideas from me of course and that's it so that's it for this tutorial as you can see i show you i'll upload this model in it to my drive i'll show give you the link where you can download the model on my text version tutorial which you can find in the description below you can leave the comments you can leave questions or just tell you if this was useful for you and don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to this will help me to create more of this content for you and of course this is the education and education is free from me at least and i hope this will help us to grow as a machine learning or or ai specialists in the future so thank you again for watching and next time in the next part i'll thinking i'm not yet sure but i think i'll start working with the sound data to I'll create a tutorial how to recognize the sound data from a file so uh, our model would understand it and write us words so we'll see about that and we'll see in the near future thank you again for watching don't don't hesitate to like this video and we'll see you next time see you